Today I'm going to show you how to install the Smart Core Luxury Vinyl Tile. It's very DIY friendly and it's really, really cost effective. And I'm going to show you some pointers I've learned after doing it for one day. So let me take you into the room. So I, we probably spent about four hours yesterday doing a 200 square foot room, my friend and I, and there was furniture in the room. So what we ended up doing was one half of the room, then moving the furniture over to the completed side. And when I say the completed side, I mean we put the quarter round on the walls and the floor is 100% locked down and caulked before we move the furniture back in position. And the floor looks and feels absolutely beautiful. We have to do a little bit of caulking for the quarter round articulations but it is possible to do this with furniture in the room. Let me show you the other side. Uh, we put the luxury vinyl tile on a plywood subfloor. So before we move the furniture, we had to add a couple of wire nails to make sure that nothing shifted. Uh, wire nails and or some type of adhesive are critical components for getting your floor in position. Um, you definitely need some type of glue. If you're putting it over concrete or existing tile, I would even recommend a hot glue gun or some type of liquid nailing product. On top of plywood, we use wire nails and glue in a very, very small quantity. You honestly can't even see the nails on a casual walkthrough but there are a few in the floor. Probably every other row has a couple of nails in it to make sure that the floor is nice and secure and does not shift. You can barely tell. And the furniture is able to slide across the floor accordingly because of the nails and glue. Okay, it's also very important to mind the corners where it's coming against the wall. That's another important place to put your wire nails because as time goes on with the floor, it's going to expand and contract and it's going to want to move somewhere. So you want to have a little bit of a, a gap back here and you also want to have a few finishing nails or wire nails so it doesn't shift too much. Another important step I realized after doing the floor for one day is the side tab. And when I say side tab, I mean this part. This part of the floor, to me, is unnecessary. It's unnecessary. The main reason it's unnecessary is because you want room for your floor to expand and contract. And when you remove this piece, 
you have a small gap underneath where your floor can do that without this interlocking tab. It also helps the floor go in a lot faster when you remove this tab. Okay, the tab is very easy to move. You can just break it off with your fingers. Another reason you don't need this tab is because when you put in your extra plank, your next row, right in here, it locks down that articulation. So when we get ready to put in the next row, I'm going to show you that step. Like I said, it goes much faster and it's definitely a lot less moving of the floor when you take out that side tab piece. Let me show you the next step. My friend has already marked and measured the plank that goes here. So I'm going to use my favorite tile saw with a wood blade to cut along the line and slide it right in place without that side tab. So watch and learn. So it's marked off. You just put your saw on it. And you know it's in there. Try to get it as close to the other side as possible. And you're good. Nice. Now we're on to the next row. And I'm going to remove that, um, this part again and lock it in. Lay it flat. Make sure you can't pull it apart and it locks in this thing too. Now you're off to the next piece. Did you tell them about staggering it? Like you're doing? Uh oh. So my, my friend is showing you a quick way to measure what you need. You just put it up against the, the previous plank. You mark it off on the opposite side to get a cleaner cut. Then you take it to the saw. So every couple of rows, we're putting down a thin layer of construction adhesive just to minimize the sliding 
and the buckling of the floor. And we're just going to lay the floor right over it. And we'll show you that step. Also, my friend is running into a couple of staples from the previous uh, carpeting that was on the floor. And just getting those out the way. This is something you have to kind of spot check as you go because you don't want anything interfering with the floor being as flat as possible. Look at that. Laid down perfectly. Now we're ready for the stirring it up, jamming it in. And now another whole piece is going down right on top of the glue. And doing this floor is like a very, very rudimentary puzzle. You just have to get every piece to fit in and support the previous piece. So we're going about every two rows and then locking it in with glue, I'm sorry, construction adhesive and a couple of wire nails.
I got a lot of glue, so I'm now gonna jimmy rig my piece over and slide it into the notch. Just like that. That corner is done. more pieces to go. Okay. All of the floors in. Now it's time to nail and caulk. Nail and caulk. And then we go to the quarter round. So we're putting the quarter round in. And my friend is caulking. Oh. <laughs> caulking and quarter round time. It's making a big difference. We're almost done. Let me show you guys this piece right here. Before, after, before, after. So now I'm going to nail it in and caulk it in the corner.
So now we're just cleaning up a little bit of light gray caulk where it was a bit too much of a seam. And every time I've seen or done this, this floor, you're always going to have to use some caulk somewhere because there is no such thing as a completely level or a completely plumb floor or wall. So that's why you need some caulk to clean up any, any seam. That's how you do that. The floor is done. I hope you tried this project. So the next step is letting all the caulk dry and then doing a sweeping and a vacuuming. So the floor has been cleaned, furniture is back in the room, it's looking amazing.